compared to 8% of married parents, will separate before their child's 5 featuring H birthday, Kiernan, 1999. Sometimes men choose to desert and sometimes they are pushed because they can make no meaningful financial or emotional contribution to the household. Either way, the fact remains that unmarried fathers who seek custody of their children are rare in comparison to the number of men being pursued by government agencies to provide financial support for their abandoned children. 26% of children in the United States live in a single parent home. Nationally, about 12% of American households are female-headed, a FIGO that pales into insignificance compared to FIGOs from Belarus, 54%, Eritrea, 48%, and Haiti, 44%. Rates of female-headed households are a proxy for a nation's poverty but, at an individual level, they are a testament to a mother's commitments to her children through the worst of times. For all these reasons, nature has crafted a special emotional attachment between mother and child that functions to increase the chance of an infant achieving independence, adulthood, and reproduction. Fathers contribute in their own way to a child's safety and provisioning, although, because good fathers tend to marry good mothers, some of the apparent advantages accrued by their children may have as much to do with his wise choice of mate than with his direct contribution to parenting, Amato, 1998, Geary, 2000. Mothers know that a good partner is worth having, but through our evolutionary past from an infant's viewpoint, mothers have always been essential while fathers have been an optional extra. Pursuing half the point. Sexual selection is at the very core of Darwinian theory. The difference between men and women in their parental investment was the key that opened the research doors to the study of human reproductive psychology, and academics poured through them. The reproductive task can be broken into two stages and two kinds of problems, phi ending the right mate and raising offspring to maturity. Males direct a greater part of their energy to the former, females to the latter. 74. Mothers matter most, women and parental investment. The study of mating drew far more research attention than the study of parenting. It is tempting to think that this was the result of the predominance of male researchers whose interest was understandably in their own sex. But it was also something to do with the way that sexual selection was defined, predominantly by male researchers, Campbell, 2009. THEY focused on competition for mating opportunities using a definition that Darwin employed in his earlier work, the struggle between males for possession of the females. THS is a more restricted definition than Darwin used later with its focus on differential reproduction, the advantage which certain individuals have over others of the same sex and species, solely in respect of reproduction. Reproduction is a much bigger concept than copulation, it includes birth and parenting and so accords a much more critical role to women. As, Audi 1999, page 81, original emphasis in italics, puts it so aptly, unless mating results in the production of offspring who themselves survive infancy and the juvenile years and position themselves so as to reproduce, sex is only so much sound and undulation signifying nothing. Raising offspring is as critical to reproductive success, if not more so, as sexual athleticism. Yet women's capacity to perform this feat, lasting over years, costing them dearly, constraining their own life choices, shaping the next generation, was taken as unremarkable. While studies of mate preferences loomed large in evolutionary psychology research, decisions about birth spacing, breastfeeding, weaning, and all apparenting took a back seat. Until the arrival of Sarah Awadee's exceptional book Mother Nature, mothering was taken for granted as a straightforward and unproblematic exercise. Awadee, 1999, page 69, was forced to underline again and again the critical importance of the mother. For species such as primates, the mother is the environment, or at least the most important feature in it during the most perilous phase of any individual's existence. Her luck plus how well she copes with her world, its scarcities, its predators, its pathogens, along with her conspecifices in it, are what determine whether or not a fertilization ever counts. I think that an important reason for this neglect derived from the way parental investment was portrayed. Females, with their heavy parental investment, were the prizes for which swaggering males competed. The image is irresistible, a female sits on the sidelines, passively awaiting the arrival of a male who, by demonstrating his dominance over his rivals, has won the undisputed right to her reproductive favors.